In today's True Crimes Tutorial Tuesday video, I'm talking about Maria Cowell whilst doing my makeup, so keep on watching to hear about her murder and see me create this makeup look. Maria Cowell was born on the 26th of March 1965 and when she was only a few months old her father Raymond Cowell died and subsequently Maria and her siblings were all placed in foster care as her mother was unable to take care of them. In 1966 she was placed with her aunt and uncle Doris and Bob Cooper. There she was said to be very happy and well looked after. Her situation changed drastically however on the 22nd of October 1971 when she returned to live with her biological mother Pauline Keppel and her husband William Keppel on the Whitehawk Council Estate in Brighton, England. William Keppel had children of his own with Pauline and the couple favoured those children over Maria without compunction. For example, William bought his biological children ice cream and required Maria to watch as they ate it, having refused to buy any for her. Many neighbours and teachers communicated concerns to various agencies. Nevertheless, even though she appeared almost a walking skeleton, Maria was allowed to remain with the Keppels and her half-siblings. On the night of the 6th of January 1973, William arrived home at half eleven to find Maria still awake and watching television. Her mother, fearing her drunk and violent husband, had kept Maria up. Maria refused to acknowledge him upon his return home and he responded violently. He repeatedly kicked her, leaving her with severe injuries both internal and external. Then he went to bed. The following morning he wheeled Maria in a pram to the Royal Sussex County Hospital in Brighton with severe internal injuries including brain damage and shortly after arriving she passed away. Maria had an empty stomach when she died and both her eyes were blackened and she had a fractured rib. So I don't quite get why the mother didn't intervene after he went to bed and tried to, you know, try to like do something to help her daughter. I'm assuming that the mother already was asleep um, and that's why she made Maria stay up. Obviously, you know, she may not have been able to save Maria, but she could have at least tried to do something. Her grave in Port Slade Cemetery, Brighton and Hove, is marked by a small white marble statue of a winged angel. Maria was one of six siblings and was survived by her three half-brothers and two half-sisters, as well as her foster parents Bob and Doris Cooper, with which she spent six years of her life with. And it's such a shame that she couldn't have stayed with them and lived a long, happy life, you know, grown up, become, you know, the woman she was meant to be instead of being, you know, ripped from that family and put back with her mother. The case captured the public's attention and the press called for action. Despite the publication of a book urging the tragedy not to be forgotten, it incredibly took over 30 years before agencies were required by law to guarantee the free flow of information, which is so ridiculous. I was actually, whilst doing my research, looking up um, other children, because I had a few other like child abuse cases before, um that were after this one happened and i actually looked up the ones that happened before this one happened and it's actually kind of crazy just how many there is and how little action um was done to like intervene in these cases of parents or um step parents or you know relatives of you know people abusing children it's just really disgusting an inquiry was set up and was chaired by thomas gilbert field fisher a recorder of the crown court other members included olive stevenson a social work academic the inquiry by the department of health found that east sussex county council had insufficient evidence to return the girl to her birth mother there were 50 official visits to the family including from social workers health visitors police and housing officers all agencies involved in the case were criticised 
as they bloody well should be because none of them done their jobs properly. Now for one of the most infuriating parts of this case, William was later found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to eight years in prison, to which his sentence was halved on appeal. So he served four years for killing his stepdaughter, like for real, what the actual fuck. I honestly don't know who allowed his appeal to be, you know, processed and, you know, happen because even eight years for murder well i mean obviously it was manslaughter but he did murder his daughter you know even if he didn't you know mean to kill her he killed her you know the violence that he was committing against his little girl honestly it's so upsetting the case of maria Colwell has remained in collective memory and has often been referred to when similar cases have come to light, such as the death of Victoria Klimbe in 2000, Peter Connolly aka Baby P in 2007 and Daniel Palker in 2012. I have done a video on all of those three cases so feel free to check them out as well. Also the fact that it took over 30 years after this case took place for any actual changes or like anything to really be done is just absolutely infuriating like it's ridiculous and like I mentioned earlier when I was researching this case it is heartbreaking just how many other names I come across that you know, were victims of child abuse that led to their death. So that has been everything I have on this case, everything for today's video. I hope you've all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.